It was here in Cambridge that the first clear evidence for smaller objects inside the atom was found. Many of the great scientists of history have walked these streets, and one of the greatest was J.J. Thompson, who became the director of this, the old Cavendish Laboratory. In 1896, Thompson had just got his hands on this new piece of kit. Now, it's essentially a particle accelerator. When this plate's heated, particles are emitted. They're accelerated by these electrodes. They pass through these two plates, across which you can apply a voltage, and they hit the end of the bulb here on a screen which glows so you can see the beam. Now this is a modern version of Thomson's apparatus. Again, we've got the particle accelerator and there's a screen in there so you can see the beam glow. What Thomson did was he varied the voltage across the plates and he measured the amount of bending as the voltage changed. That allows you to deduce the mass of the particles in the beams. Now the lightest known particle in Thomson's day was the hydrogen atom. But Thomson found from these measurements that the particles in this beam are almost 2,000 times lighter than hydrogen atoms. Thomson had discovered the first subatomic particle, the electron. The uh, electron owes its practical utility, utility to its smallness. It might apparently Shakespeare say my use is great because I am so small. The electron was the first discovery of a fundamental particle and it is interesting to realise that more than a hundred years later the electron is still, to the best measurements we can do today, a fundamental letter of nature's alphabet. We can use electrons as ways to probe materials and look at the structure in electron microscopes or in big machines like this accelerator behind me. Pretty much all of, of everything we do in the, in the 21st century depends on understanding the properties of electrons. Thomson had discovered that the atom is not the fundamental building block of matter. There are smaller objects inside. So atoms could no longer be thought of as hard, indivisible spheres. But how did the electrons fit inside the atom? Thomson suggested that the atom was something like this muffin, with the negatively charged electrons embedded in a positive body. It would be a student of Thomson's that proved him wrong. 